Dear students, continuing with our lecture series on medicinal chemistry. This is our 11th lecture and 5th uh, lecture on uh, cardiovascular drugs. In the first four lectures, uh, we have discussed about the various types of uh, cardiovascular agents, their classification and uh, the type of disease for which they are used. Uh, in the first three lectures, then in the fourth lecture, we have synthesized uh, <coughs> certain cardiovascular drugs uh, in the organic uh, laboratory. Uh, continuing with that, uh, this is our fifth lecture and in this lecture, we will discuss mainly two important uh, drugs out of which one is uh, cardiovascular drug quinidine we will concentrate on the synthesis of quinidine mainly but uh, the quinidine is having uh, its diastereomer as quinine uh, which is uh, used as an anti-malarial agent the details of quinine will be discussed separately but in the present lecture we will uh, discuss the synthesis of QDD. So, as I told you, uh, in the first three lectures, we have discussed about uh, various types of cardiovascular drugs, antihypertensive drugs, antiarrhythmic drugs, and vasopressor drugs. Whereas in the fourth lecture, we have discussed about some uh, synthesis of some common cardiovascular agents and uh, the present uh, lecture deals with the synthesis of uh, quinidine quinidine uh, which is having uh, this structure uh, this is a diastereoisomer of quinine uh, you can see the only difference between uh, the two uh, alkaloids is uh, the configuration here this hydrogen is in equatorial position whereas here in this case hydrogen is in the axial position and this rest of the molecule is in axial position here rest of the molecule is in uh, equatorial position so uh, this is the only difference uh, otherwise the structure of both of these compounds is same and uh, uh, these uh, are the diastereomers of each other and out of uh, these two the quinidine uh, which is a class 1a antiarrhythmic agent and this is used to treat heart rhythm disturbances and uh, this is also used to prevent ventricular arrhythmias and uh, uh, out of that ventricular arrhythmias particularly in Brugada syndrome uh, this is used although uh, as far as the safety of the drug is concerned uh, uh, this is not a certain uh, safe drug for these types of uh, uh, heart illness. As I have told you, uh, quinidine, uh, quinidine is a diastereomer of antimalarial agent quinine and both of these, uh, they, were, they are naturally occurring alkaloids. Uh, they were originally derived from bark of the chinkona tree. Uh, and uh, because of the side effects uh, in these alkaloids, uh, particularly quinidine, uh, the Illilili company which was manufacturing uh, this drug, this has discontinued the manufacturing of uh, quinidine gluconate in U.S and further availability in uh, other countries is also uncertain now. Uh, the most common side effect of quinidine uh, intox uh, intoxication is uh, that it, it can lead to collection of symptoms. Uh, particularly a uh, side effect is uh, called as synchronism uh, where uh, tinnitus that is ringing in the ear uh, of the patient take place and this is the most characteristic and common uh, symptom about the toxicity effect of quinidine. So <clears throat> uh, as I told you that these are uh, the naturally occurring uh, uh, alkaloids, uh, natural alkaloids 
So uh, many attempts have been made to synthesize uh, these both quinine and quinidine in the laboratory. And uh, the first uh, uh, total synthesis, uh, which was uh, catalytic asymmetric total synthesis of uh, nishomerically pure quinine and quinidine, was achieved by Jacobson in 2004. <laughs> Uh, the publication is uh, in General American Chemical Society in two, uh, 2004 by Jacobson, wherein he synthesized uh, both uh, these alkaloids in an isomerically pure form. So, uh, the starting material for both of these is same, as you know, uh, both are diastereomers. So, what he did was, he started with this alkenyl uh, amide. This alkenyl amide is basically an alpha beta unsaturated amide. Uh, when this was treated with the methyl cyanoacetate, uh, you know this methyl cyanoacetate is an active methylene compound. So that means the two hydrogen atoms present at this carbon, they are hi highly active because of the presence of these electron withdrawing groups. And uh, in the presence of uh, saline, uh, saline aluminium catalyst, uh, the Michael type of uh, conjugate addition uh, takes place across this alpha beta unsaturated ketone and uh, we will uh, give this type of uh, addition product through saline aluminium catalysis and uh, the product is formed with 92% anisomeric excess. So uh, you can see that uh, this carbon will act as a carbon ion will attack this carbon and addition will take place across this carbon-carbon double bond and this saturated uh, uh, amide will be formed through Michael addition reaction. Then uh, this uh, saturated uh, amide will undergo first uh, reduction, uh, then uh, followed by cyclization and uh, uh, again reduction uh, in presence of uh, these reagents. So uh, this saturated amide will be converted into this anisomerically enriched cis dialkyl piperidine and uh, the product is formed in a ratio of uh, 3 to 1 3 times uh, cis product is formed in comparison to transport <laughs> and then <coughs> this uh, cis dialkyl piperidine uh, this uh, <coughs> reacts uh, uh, in the presence of uh, these conditions, uh, uh, phosphorus yield reaction, Wittig reaction take place so that this alcohol uh, is converted into alkene. So basically uh, oxidation of this alcohol to uh, alkene is take place, so you know, uh, first this will be oxidized to the aldehyde and then, you know, Wittig reaction will lead to the conversion of carbonyl compounds into carbon-carbon uh, double bond, that is, alkenes are formed. And then, uh, with this base, this will undergo hydrolysis of this uh, hydroxyprotecting agent. So this uh, hydroxyl group will be generated there, and uh, then uh, this will be reacted with the uh, boron ester derivative to give us uh, this type of boronic ester will be formed, and uh, similarly uh, this boronic ester on condensation with this uh, quinoline derivative. This quinoline derivative will undergo carbon-carbon coupling reaction at this carbon and at this carbon to be to give us uh, uh, a condensation uh, product uh, through carbon-carbon coupling reaction and this quinoline derivative is synthesized from this aromatic amine 4-methoxyaniline or NSD 
uh, when this is reacted with uh, this carbon-carbon uh, triple bonded ester uh, in the presence of triphenyl phosphine bromide, uh, this will undergo uh, cyclization to give us uh, this type of uh, 4-bromo-6-methoxy-quinoline derivative. And these 4-bromo-6-methoxy-quinoline uh, uh, derivative, as I have told you, they will undergo uh, coupling reaction with uh, boronic ester to give us uh, uh, the intermediate I uh, which is used for the synthesis of both uh, quinine and quinidine. Now, how this condensation take place? Uh, as I have told you in the previous slide that uh, this uh, 4-bromo-6-methoxyquinoline uh, 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 undergoes carbon-carbon coupling reaction with this boronic ester to give us this quinoline uh, derivative. So, uh, this carbon-carbon uh, double bond, this carbon gets coupled at this carbon to give us this quinoline derivative I. So, uh, now this quinoline derivative uh, will act as an uh, intermediate for the synthesis of both quinidine as well as quinine uh, which I have already told you are the diastereomers of each other. Now what happens is when this uh, quinoline derivative uh, alkene undergoes uh, Sharpless asymmetric dihydroxylation, uh, then uh, this is converted into the corresponding epoxide. And <coughs> the uh, depending upon the type of uh, reagent used, uh, we will get the diastereoisomeric epoxide formed through this reaction. Now, uh, as you can see that here we have used admix alpha and here we have used admix uh, beta. Now, admix is a commercially uh, available mixture of reagent that act as asymmetric catalyst for various types of chemical reactions, uh, including the sharpless asymmetric dihydroxylation uh, of alkenes. So, these uh, two reaction, uh, two uh, catalysts uh, in the chiral form, alpha chiral form or beta chiral form, give us the different. Uh, 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 optically active epoxides. So here the latter uh, AD uh, stands for asymmetric dihydroxylation. And uh, when uh, uh, this quinoline alkene was uh, treated with admix A, we led to the formation of this type of chiral epoxide. Uh, and uh, uh, hydrolysis of this uh, chiral uh, epoxide then lead to the formation of quinidine whereas when this is treated with admix beta then we will get this diastereoisomeric uh, epoxide and which further on hydrolysis will give us quinine. Quinine you know is an antimalarial agent whereas quinidine act as uh, a cardiovascular drug as I have detailed out in the first slide. Then uh, some modifications uh, have been suggested uh, by many authors and one important modification was given recently in 2010 by Agarwal et al. Uh, they reported the synthesis of quinidine from sulfur, uh, sulfur units. So uh, these types of uh, sulfur units uh, when uh, they were reacted with and protected muroquine aldehyde. They produced uh, directly these types of uh, chiral epoxides uh, in uh, 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 where trans to cis ratio of the product forms it 84 to 16 percent and these uh, sulfur units they were uh, in turn synthesized from uh, the, this uh, quinoline alcohol derivative uh, with the uh, chiral uh, sulfide so when this chiral sulfide was uh, reacted with this 
quinoline alcohol derivative uh, in the presence of 2,6-di uh, tashibutyl pyridine and triplet uh, anhydride in dichloromethane at very low temperature of the order of minus 45 degree centigrade. They uh, undergo uh, condensation reaction. Uh, this will act as a nucleophile to attack this carbon with the uh, uh, elimination of <coughs> this hydroxyl in the form of triplet because uh, this hydroxy will be first converted into uh, triplet derivative which is a very good leaving group and in presence of this, this will generate this type of sulfur <laughs> And this sulfur relate, as I told you, on uh, reaction with uh, this aldehyde derivative. So this aldehyde will give us this type of uh, chiral epoxide derivative. And this on hydrolysis under microwave uh, conditions at 180 degrees centigrade uh, for 15 minutes in presence of cesium fluoride and dimethyl formide uh, in the uh, presence of oxygen will lead to the formation of quinidine in 78 percent. So uh, this method is even better than the uh, method suggested by Jacobson uh, and this is one of the uh, recent methods uh, which have been given by uh, Agarwala. So these are the references which have been used to for preparing this reaction. Uh, this lecture in addition to the references are already quoted uh, in the different slides. Thank you very much.